What is the probability that you might be called to testify? I, I think uh, close to zero. Um, uh, I, I expect that, that uh, my name will be invoked by the defense. I think one of the, their lines of defense will be that this rabid Wall Street Journal reporter influenced regulators into uh, cracking down on, on Theranos in, in a way that they might otherwise not have. Um, but I think the, the prosecution, uh, for its part, is going to uh, rely on its own independent investigation and, and uh, uh, show to the jury the results of its own investigation. And so I don't expect the, the prosecution to uh, rely on me uh, as a witness. They're going to rely on, I mean, some of the, the sources that I used uh, in, in my reporting for the journal and in the book uh, ended up being interviewed later by uh, federal prosecutors and FBI agents, and some of them, like Alan Beam, will be witnesses at trial. Um, the, the, way, the other way in which the, the book may come up is I expect every prospective juror to be asked whether they read the book. And, and, uh, anyone uh, who says that they, they did will, will be uh, eliminated from the jury pool by the defense. Yes. I wonder if uh, you're working on a second book um, on this topic that would be analysis of what some really intelligent people like George Schultz and others, how in the heck, <laughs> how in the heck did they become so adamant that this was a, a big deal and give millions, tens of millions of dollars? I think that is another story. So. Right. Well, the uh, one thing I didn't mention in my presentation is that um, by the time uh, Theranos went live in the uh, fall of 2013, with its blood tests in Walgreens stores and, and Elizabeth started raising her profile and becoming a celebrity, she had assembled this uh, impressive board of uh, former statesmen and military commanders, uh, among them George Schultz and Henry Kissinger, uh, Jim Mattis, Sam Nunn, uh, Bill Frist. And um, uh, uh, there are a couple things they all had in common. One is uh, their age. They were all between, all, they, well, they, they were also all male. Um, and, uh, and all these men uh, were old men, uh, aged uh, anywhere from 65 to 90-something. To um, and the third thing they had in, in common is uh, they, they didn't uh, have any expertise whatsoever in medicine or blood diagnostics. Um, and so, obviously, a lot of people, once the scandal broke, uh, said, you know, in retrospect, that was a, a major red flag. Um, but at the time, some of the investors who invested looked at the board and uh, saw the board as, as uh, you know, uh, uh, or interpreted the board as, as an, another piece of evidence that the company was for real because they thought, you know, uh, how would these uh, larger than life uh, figures in the twilights of their careers and lives, uh, how could they possibly be uh, willingly jeopardizing their reputations? They, they must know something, and they must know that this this company is on the up and up. And um, one one hedge fund investor in particular uh, saw the board as as a, uh, a sort of an insurance policy that this was a good investment. But but just to finish answering your question about the board, um, I came to the conclusion in my reporting that uh, they did not know what Elizabeth and Sonny were doing. Uh, they weren't privy to the shenanigans to the hacking of the Siemens machines to the fact that the technology didn't work. Um, you know, they really were sleeping at the wheel. In fact, uh, there literally were moments during board meetings when George Schultz and Henry Kissinger, who were in their mid-90s, would fall asleep. Um, <laughs> and, and it wasn't really a, a real board uh, because Elizabeth controlled 99.7% of the voting rights and the board couldn't even reach a quorum without her. <laughs>